Associate Dean for the Humanities in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Um, Class Acts is a series that's designed to showcase the research of the faculty of the college in a lively and accessible way to inform, entertain, and inspire the community. Uh, this afternoon's exciting event caps off a great year of engaging performances. Before I introduce the faculty member who will bring us today's show, I'd like to thank several people who have designed and coordinated Class Acts. First and foremost among these is Jessica Beeson, project coordinator in the college, who took the idea for Class Acts from Dean Steinmetz and just ran with it. She has worked uh, tirelessly to make each of these unique events fulfill the vision of the dean and the individual faculty presenters. Um, Christy Applehance, who is here in the back, uh, outreach coordinator, and her assistant, Christy Henderson, who's not here because she got married on Friday, um, have handled the public relations of aspects of these events. These three talented women deserve our profound thanks for coordinating this great series. Thanks also to the Hall Center for the Humanities for hosting this final event, and especially to Jeannie Wolfkula, who is here coordinating, and also of the Hall Center, and also Director Victor Bailey. It's now my pleasure to introduce Professor Mary Emma Graham, Professor of English at the University of Kansas. Uh, professor Graham is the author of, or editor of eight books, including The Cambridge Companion to the African American Novel, published in 2004, Conversations with Margaret Walker, published by University of Press of Mississippi in 2002, uh, Fields Watered with Blood, Critical Essays on Margaret Walker, published by the University of Georgia Press in 2001, and in 2010 she will publish The House Where My Soul Lives, The Life of Margaret Walker with Oxford University Press. Uh, Professor Graham is John Hope Franklin Fellow at the National Humanities Center, the winner of the Ford Foundation and uh, American Council of Learned Societies Fellowships, and an astounding 10 grants from the National hum uh, Endowment for the Humanities. She is the founder and director of the Project on the History of Black Writing, which recovers, collects, and archives the work of black writers since the 1850s to promote the teaching, research, and public literacy of the literary heritage of African Americans. Professor Graham is an expert on the work of Langston Hughes, Richard Wright, and the poet, professor, and activist Mar Margaret Walker, whose work is featured in today's program. The History of Black Writing Project beautifully exemplifies the kind of outreach to the broader community that Class Acts is designed to promote. Professor Mary Emma Graham will now introduce the performers for today's event. I need my page. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank all of you for being here. Uh, I say that because we've been in rehearsal for a while, and I don't know what time it is now. <laughs> Uh, thank especially for my students, many of them, them traveled far from Edwards area, Overland Park to come, so thank you very much for coming. Um, I too want to thank uh, the college for um, allowing us to be part of this event. Uh, this is of course the last act of the class acts, and we like to think that it was a wonderful thing to, to hold at this point, uh, sponsored by the college, uh, and organized by the Project on the History of Black Writing. Uh, it's a special unit within the Department of English. Uh, it's a wonderful idea to do this, and I really do hope we can have it again. Uh, so I thank Dean Steinmetz and for Jessica, who's not here with us today, for carrying out uh, the mission that he um, proposed. A special thanks to her uh, and prayers with her family at this very difficult time. As many of you know, my commitment has always been to make the university more open and accessible to various publics. This is the mission of the Project on History of Black Writing, now 10 years old at KU. Although HBW came to the university in 1998, it was founded with its first NEH grant in 1983 at the University of Mississippi. We believed 
and continue to promote and create educational and research programs in the humanities that both preserve and convey the history of African-American literature and culture to all Americans. We are especially interested in recovering work by authors who have made major contributions to American culture and thought, but whose work is unknown or still little known. Today's program, a representation of the works of Margaret Walker, therefore fulfills our mission in a new and exciting way by expanding further the idea of collaboration, the world of academia, and the world of professional artists and musicians working together in order to both create and convey new knowledge. Now our performers, Randy Klein, a graduate of Berkeley School of Music has composed the scores for several Emmy-winning film documentaries. Some of them you will recognize, including Free to Dance, Beyond Tara, The Extraordinary Life of Hattie McDaniel, and Richard Wright, Black Boy. He himself is the winner of four Emmy Awards and two gold records and numerous CDs. The genres included in Klein's musical repertoire are solo piano improvisations, jazz compositions with and without lyrics, songs for musical theater shows, music for children's educational TV, music for film and documentaries, RB and pop, country and novelty songs, and improvisational synthesizer works. A little known secret about Randy is that he began his career as an accompanist and writer from Millie Jackson, the great rhythm and blues artist. <laughs> you didn't think I was going to tell that, did you? <laughs> the great rhythm and blues artist that many of us grew up with. I would strongly recommend for those of you who are R&B music lovers and others of you who don't know that world to really understand that musical culture. Do go out and get totally unrestricted. You will see Randy Clyde's name all over it. <laughs> Uh, he is president, however, of Jazz Heads, an independent label that releases original imp improvised music. It is where you can order his CDs. Randy Klein will stand and welcome him. Okay. Rosina M. Hill, a native of Sarasota, Florida, earned a BFA in music from Carnegie Mellon University. Like many performers, she grew up singing in church and performing in her local community. Rosina is an extraordinarily versatile talent to whom I have now listened for two days in rehearsal, and I am convinced that she is the reincarnation of Margaret Walker. She is absolutely amazing. Rosina's abilities as a singing actress has, includes musical theater, jazz, gospel, Negro spirituals, pop, and art songs in her repertoire. Her concert solo performances include Carnegie Hall with the New York Pops, Teatro di Massimo, Symphony Orchestra in Palermo, Sicily, the Memphis Symphony Orchestra, and the Arkansas Symphony Orchestra. She has performed in seven Broadway shows, including The Color Purple, Monty Python's Spamalot, Imaginary Friends, River Dance on Broadway, and Ragtime. Her off-Broadway and regional theater credits are numerous. Her debut solo, If You Believe, has just been released, and I'm sorry we do not have copies of it to sell. Rosina says that If You Believe is a compilation of songs with words that focus on positive, uplifting thoughts, declaring with confidence and trust that the desire of your heart is possible. In it, she performs songs written between 1905 and 1995, and I have heard her rendition of Over the Rainbow. So we know that although this is not her first visit to Kansas, she's already been to Oz by listening to its music and is now giving it back to us. So she has already become Kansasized. We are especially grateful to Rosina for her enthusiasm and her, for her professionalism. She makes her debut with this performance of the Margaret Walker Song Cycle, despite the fact that she is in the middle of planning a wedding, May 11th. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome her to her first visit to Kansas and wish her well on her future marriage and her musical career. Rosina Hill. Our production team includes Ian Trimble, a sophomore who throws javelin for, K for KU's track and field team and is majoring in film, and Brian Brazel, 
a senior film major graduating in December with a special major in athletics and entertainment representation. His concentrations are in film and communication. Both Ian and Brian are students of Professor Madison Davis Lacey, who better knows how to navigate the world of academia and the arts as an award-winning filmmaker and enthusiastic teacher who pushes his students to engage in production experiences early or sooner than later, Lacey is best known for his work Eyes on the Prize Two, Beyond Tara, The Extraordinary Life of Hattie McDaniel, Frida Dance, Richard Wright Black Boy, Paris is Burning, and Ken Burns Jazz, where he was a contributing producer. American, American novel, published in 2004. Conversations with Margaret Walker, published by University of Press of Mississippi in 2002. Uh, Fields Water Action as well. Uh, I am, as Anne has told you, Mary Emma Graham, the English department at the University of Kansas. I have a very small role in today's performance and would like to acknowledge the tireless efforts of one of our dedicated HBW staff members, Cynthia Lynn, is... Okay, obviously, but Cindy. A KU graduate in English and African American Studies. Cindy and Randy have become an amazing team. Started work on this project very early, and they began to do a number of efforts, including successfully uh, securing funding to continue this project. So I wish to publicly acknowledge Cindy for her work with Randy. The performance that you see today is the beginning of a longer project, which we hope to complete by 2015, the centennial of Margaret Walker. We welcome your comments, questions following the performance. Ladies and gentlemen, the Margaret Walker Song Cycle. I want to write the songs of my people. My grandmothers were strong. They followed plows and bent to toil. They moved through fields sowing seed. They touched earth and grain grew. They were full of sturdiness and singing. My grandmothers were strong. My grandmothers are full of memories, smelling of soap and onions and wet clay, with veins rolling roughly over quick hands. They have many clean words to say. My grandmothers were strong. Why am I not as they?
happiness and singing. My grandmothers were strong. My grandmothers are full of memories. Smelling of soap and onions and wet clay With veins rolling roughly over quick hands They have many clean words to say My grandmothers were strong Why am I not? Hi there. I think we have a technical problem. Um, are you guys um, let's just go to the next one. there working on it? <laughs> so let's just let them get this working because I don't think you want to miss this. Working now. Is it up on the screen? The, it will be. It will be when, for the next song. Uh, let's go back. How do you redo this song? We'd like to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll do it with the visual element this time. Oh, yeah, Work in progress. <laughs>
Thank you. Um, Margaret Walker passed away in 1998. Um, I met her in 2001, um, on the subway actually in Manhattan, coming from uh, Brooklyn to Manhattan on the number one train. Um, uh, it, there, there was a placard, um, a, uh, a, a, a Barnes and Noble had uh, poetry, in, it was called Poetry in Motion. And there was this Margaret Walker poem, uh, Lineage, the poem you just heard. And um, I think we're going for props now. <laughs> and um, I, I read the poem, and oh, there, there it is. That, Mary Emma just found this, and Dr. Green just found this in her garage, I think. And um, so that's, that's what I saw. And, and I read it, and it touched me, and I got off the subway. And I said, wow, that's great. Thank you. Uh, about four days later, um, I was on the train again, and I see this placard. And I read it again, and this time I write it down. And um, I take it home and put it on the piano, and I wrote music to it. Um, and then I called Davis Lacey, uh, Professor Lacey, uh, a while uh, later, and he says, oh, well, Margaret wrote a lot of poems. You got to go check out her book. And of course, you know, she wrote a book of poems. Little do I know. And that was the beginning of the adventure. And I've been writing these poems, the music to the poems for about, uh, since, since about 2001, and they come out slowly. And um, I, there's no particular order, uh, but recently with um, the economy tanking and everybody having hard times, I, I fell upon a poem uh, titled Inflation Blues, uh, which we'll, we'll perform for you, but I thought I'd read it. Inflation blues is what we got. Poor black folks must do without can't buy no bread, can't buy no house, can't live no better than a louse. We used to sing way back when depression was and come again. What's the matter with Uncle Sam? He took away my sugar, now he's messing with my ham. A piece of beef too high to buy, chicken ain't no better. Fat back and fish too high to fry, a quarter mails one letter. It used to be when I was small, $10 bought enough for y'all. My daddy couldn't make one trip from corner store to carry all. This morning, Lord, I bought one bag and $15, says that old hag. I swallowed hard and bit my lip. That sure was one expensive trip. The gas too high to fill the tank. One year cost more than did the car. Bus fare so high I gotta walk. Cost more to live than foreign war. You can't afford to live or die. A baby costs too much to buy. Hospital bed for just one day will scare your very death away. I don't know what we coming to. The government says they gonna do. And all they do is raise the rent and talk again how much they spent. The wheat, the corn, and other grain. If it is dry or if it rain, must go across the world to feed. While we must pay and still must need. Our city streets are full of crime with robbers, muggers, raping blind. Poor f people can't afford to sleep. Your house ain't safe. And you can't sweep your troubles underneath the rug. Cause then that bad old carpet bug will rot you down, your house and all. Don't care which way you try to crawl. Inflation blues is what we got. Poor black folks must do without. We naked in the wind and blind as jaybirds in molten time. <laughs> Inflation blues is what we get. Poor black folks must do without. Can't buy no bread, can't buy no house, can't live no better 
than a louse. Oh, 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 oh. We used to sing way back when depression was and come again. What's the matter with Uncle Sam? He took away my sugar. Now he's messing with my hair. Oh. A piece of beef too high to buy. Chicken ain't no better. Fat back and fish too high to fry. A quarter male's one letter. It used to be when I was small Ten dollars bought enough for you all My daddy couldn't make one trip From corner store to carry all There's more than Lord I swallowed hard And fifteen dollars says that old hag I swallowed hard and bit my lip That show sure was one expensive trip The gas too high to fill the tank. One year cost more than did the car. Bus fare so high, I gotta walk. Cost more to live than foreign You can't afford to live or die. A baby cost too much to buy. Hospital bed for just one day will scare your very death away. Don't know what we coming to. The government say they gonna do, and all they do is raise the rent and talk again how much they spent the wheat, the corn, and other grain. If it is dry or if it rain, must go across the world to feed, while me must pay and still must need a city street. Sweep your troubles underneath the rug. Cause then that bad old carpet bug will rot you down, your house and all. Don't care which way you try to crawl. Inflation blues is what we get. Poor black folks must do without. We're naked in the wind and blind as jaybirds in molten time.
the two poems adapted to song that you have just heard are from a volume by Margaret Walker called This Is My Century, published in 1989. You've heard Randy reference it, less than a dec decade before her death. It is a compilation of the four volumes of poetry that appeared in her lifetime. For My People, 1942, Prophets for a New Day, 1970, October Journey, 1973, and Ferris Street, 1986, as well as new and unpublished poems. The I Want to Write, which began the phrase that you heard, is a kind of recitation or a commencement, taken here, of course, to mean beginning, although we tend to use it to mean ending, um, and a psalm. When you hear the words to these songs, we recognize that Walker is beginning a kind of journey that allowed her to record the history of her people and to become the voice of an age. But this is not what most people know about Margaret Walker. If they know anything, they know a single poem for my people, the lead poem in the volume that she published in 1942, but which she wrote in 1937 with the first appearance in Harriet Monroe's influential poetry magazine. Margaret Walker is, as Nikki Giovanni said, the most famous person nobody knows. But here's what we do know about Margaret Walker, biographically. Named in honor of her ancestors, Margaret Abigail Walker was born on 7 July 15 in Birmingham, Alabama, and raised in New Orleans. Walker's parents, a trained theologian and a minister, and a music teacher, his, her mother, encouraged her to read and to write. We can see their influences in all of her work. Walker was gifted and considered a child prodigy. She finished high school at 15, college at 19, at Northwestern University in Evanston outside of Chicago, and remained in Chicago where she found a job on the WPA in 1936. She met Richard Wright, and became part of a critical literary community. The publication of Daydream, which of course is now I Want to Write, was her first publication in 1934. It appeared in Crisis Magazine and was invited by the editor, W.E.B. Du Bois, whom she met in college. Walker's work on the WPA, her studies with the South Side, with the writers groups initiated by the Communist Party, and her involvement in the all black Southside Writers Group produced For My People in 1937, which made her a household name. Once it was anthologized in 1941 in the Negro Caravan, it would appear repeatedly in American and European anthologies and be translated into multiple languages. Walker came to know many people in Chicago and was indeed the link between generations from the 1920s through the 1990s. Her earliest Chicago friends were all writers and artists and intellectuals of one sort or another. In addition to Richard Wright, Gwendolyn Brooks, Catherine Dunham, Frank Yerby, St. Clair Drake, Arna Bone Tomps, Studs Terkel, Theodore Ward, and the list goes on. She worked most closely, of course, with Richard Wright, whose formal education had ended in the seventh grade. Theirs was a mutual, literary, and intense friendship. He was more political than she, she was more educated than he, and therefore willing to share her knowledge as teacher and editor for his then very awkward prose. Eventually in 1988, Walker would tell of that friendship in her biography, Richard Wright, Demonic Genius, a portrait of the man, a critical look at his work. After the WPA job ended, Walker went to Iowa to get her MA from the writer's workshop there completed her first collection for my people as her manuscript for the masters and won the Yale Younger Poets Award, which guaranteed publication of the collection in 1942 by the same name for my people. After a whirlwind reading and lecture tour and a whirlwind romance, she married Furnace James Alexander, her beloved Alex, and settled down in North Carolina and eventually in Jackson, Mississippi, where she, Alex, and their four children called home for the rest of their lives. Finding little time to write for publication, Walker continued writing in her journals and began a prosperous teaching career at Jackson State College, now university, where she taught until 1979 in her state. She founded the one, one of the first humanities institutes in the South, 
the first one devoted to African-American life and culture. It was called the Institute for the Study of the History, Life, and Culture of Black People. It is now renamed in her honor the Margaret Walker Alexander National Research Center. One of her first employees was none other than William Ferris, who later became head of the National Endowment for the Humanities. We wonder where he got it from. She directed the center until she retired in 1979. But it was during the 1960s that Walker reemerged as a public figure. With her novel, Jubilee, published in 1966, after she had returned to Iowa yet again, this time to complete her PhD. So her poetry volume had been her master's degree. Her historical novel, a some call folk novel, Jubilee, served as her PhD. By the time Walker was ready to publish poetry again, the context had changed from depression to a new era of the civil rights movement. Mississippi at the center of it all. It would give her much inspiration. Profits for a New Day, 1979, 1970, is generally considered her civil rights volume. Today, you will hear three poems from this volume, Medgar Evers, Street Demonstration, and Girl Held Without Bail. These poems give you the feeling of loss for one of the most important leaders of the Mississippi movement, Medgar Evers, whose assassination preceded Martin Luther King's, just as it gives us the feeling of being part of that movement. Walker came of age in the generation that respected the poet as a public intellectual. And the poet was expected to make routine appearances, reading and speaking at churches, schools, libraries, and other special events of every kind. This was even more true during the Civil Rights Movement, which gave birth to such groups as Sweet Honey and the Rock, Pete Seeger, and others. Walker's For My People was frequently read at these gatherings, and Walker herself reading a number of poems, always ending with the final For My People. During her lifetime, Walker would travel to every state, including Kansas. That visit sponsored by Beth Schultz, a visit some, some of you may remember in the 1970s. She never made it to Alaska or Hawaii. Following the civil rights poems, we return to several poems that appear in Walker's 1942 signature volume. This collection is the first to showcase the three distinct forms in which she wrote. Narratives or stories as ballads, lyrical songs as sonnets, and the long line of free verse punctuated with a short line. Two examples will be performed today. The folk ballad, Long John Nelson and Sweetie Pie, is one of 10 of those that appear in For My People. It is written in the voices of the people themselves and is intended to transmit a wisdom to those living often in troubled conditions of America. Long John Nelson and Sweetie Pie is followed by Ex-Slave, the second of these forms, the lyric or sonnet adaptation. Walker preferred a 10-line sonnet rather than the routine 14, which is what we teach our students. Today's concert ends with two songs, appropriately, I Want to Write, performed at this time, as a statement about the beginning and ending of her life as a writer. The Ballad of the Free is the final song, which makes a very strong statement about her mission as a poet. Toward the end of her life, Walker allowed me to edit and compile her essays into two volumes, How I Wrote Jubilee and Other Essays on Life and Literature, published in 1990, and On Being Female, Black, and Free, Essays by Margaret Walker, published in 1997. Since her death, I've been able to publish conversations with Margaret Walker, which gives a wonderful glimpse of both her personality, the ideas, and the voice of Margaret Walker. But nothing can capture Margaret Walker as much as you are hearing today. This music does confirm that Walker, through her work, sang a song for her people, capturing their symbolic quest for liberation. When asked how she viewed her work, she responded, the body of my work springs from my interest in a historical point of view that is central to the development of black people as we approach the 21st century. Walker did not live to see the 21st century. She died in 1998, but she was indeed the voice of her own century. She died in Chicago and is buried in Jackson, Mississippi. down 
in a beautiful place, in a beautiful place to sleep and rest. There is anguished life and our pulsing love that beat in his heart and burned in his face. They are quiet now. They are hushed and still. But the world will forever mark this hill Where they laid him down to sleep and rest Where they laid him down in a beautiful place The birds overhead will build their nest In the twilight hours sing a serenade The grass will gradually creep into shade where this martyred man sleeps unafraid. And he will have neighbors, good and true, who have given their lives for freedom too. get arrested with our group. We're hoping to be arrested and hoping to go to jail. We'll sing and shout and pray for freedom and for justice and for human liberty. chance to go to jail. I 
want my rights. I'm fighting for my rights. I want to be treated just like anybody else. I want to be treated just like anybody else. I like it fine in jail. And I don't want no bail. Cold 
black hair and bright blue gown and she took Long John clean away from Sweetie Pie one awful day. <sighs> Sweetie begged him to please come back but Long John said, I'm going to stay. Then Sweetie Pie would moan and cry and sing the blues both night and day. Long John, baby, if you come back, But Long John said, I'm really through. They're still apart this very day. When Long John got a job to do, Sweetie got sick and wasted away. Then after she had tried and tried, one day sweetie just up and died then long john went and quit his job and up and left his yellow bride <laughs> something rare like music or a painting or a book and see within your eyes that vacant stare and halfway understand that pleading look I cannot help but bitterly detest the age and men who made you what you are, who robbed you of your all, your ample best, and left you seeking life across a hateful bar and left you vainly searching for a star. Your soul appreciates, but cannot understand. to write. I want to write the songs of my people. I want to hear them singing melodies in the dark. I want to catch the last floating strains from their sob-torn throats. I want to frame their dreams into words, their souls into notes. I want to catch their sunshine laughter in a bowl fling dark hands 
to a darker sky and fill them full of stars. Then crush and mix such lights till they become a mirrored pool of brilliance in the dawn. I want to write. of the free. Thank you, Rosina. Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just in awe of the way you sing, you know. It's like she makes it just come alive. It's, like, it's magical. It's really magical. Uh, so we'd like to perform this, and thank you for being here, and uh, your response has been terrific, so thank you again. something rare like music or a painting or a book and see within your eyes that vacant stare and halfway understand that pleading I see you Bending over something rare Like music 
or a painting or a blood by the blood of God. Rosa preaching on Virginia sod. Smote the land with his passion and plea. Town's done, come to set my people free. The serpent is loosed and the hour is come. The lash shall be fast and thus shall be none. The serpent is loosed and the hour is come. Gabriel Prosser looked at the sun. The sun stands still till the work is done. The work is hard and the time is long. Now men must meet. Since we are in progress, let's just start again. Gabriel. Gabriel, from Gabriel. Okay. Can we start from the beginning? Then we have it on there. I'm sorry. I really can't see this, but it's all good. <laughs> And 
Thank you very much. They have kindly consented to answer questions uh, and talk about this process, this process of collaboration, which I have thoroughly enjoyed and learned a lot from. So uh, I'll let you guys take it from here. Questions? Well, in all honesty, we only started working on this about six weeks ago. <laughs> it, it's no, it's true. It's, uh, well, the writing has been going on for a while, but um, our dear friend Aurelia Williams had been working on this project, and she is a magnificent vocalist, and she is in Minneapolis and couldn't do this. And she said, I know people who singers, vocalists, who could come in. And I was extremely nervous because Aurelia and I had been rehearsing for about a year. And uh, I met Rosina about six weeks ago, and Rosina said, don't worry. <laughs> as, as, as far as my favorite, um, I, I vacillate between I Want to Write and uh, Long John Nelson. Um, and uh, yesterday, uh, Dr. Graham was referring to it as Long John Silver. <laughs> and as the leading authority on Margaret Walker, So we found out that after he got up and left his yellow bride, he started a fish restaurant. Um, I, it is very hard to figure out what, definitely I, I want to write, and I do love uh, the ballad of the free, even though I was little. But I mean, what I told Randy is he writes beautifully for singers. And then it's, it's just, so I really, um, I like that one. I like lineage. I, like, I really, I like them all. Um, just so you know where we're thinking of going with this, um, in the works, uh, I see this song cycle going a little bit further. I think it ultimately will be uh, 12 pieces. There'll be two more of the shorter poems. I haven't chosen which ones yet. They, I, they just have to hit me. And, and then 
I sort of internalize them and then music comes out. And um, then the big work I'm going to work on for my people. Uh, for my people will be for multivocalists. It's going to be for choir. It's going to be for fully orchestrated and I plan on working on it for about six months to get it completed. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it because hearing all those voices singing would be great. And, and Ballad of the Free also has, you can hear that it, it is, it's screaming out for choir and things like that. Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chuck. That's uh, Professor Berg from the uh, jazz department. Um, and we're, we're old friends through the jazz world. So thank you so much. Others? Yes? Plan, the plan is to perform it a lot. This is the first time we've performed it, yeah. Other than my living room, I mean. <laughs> we've done many, many performances. We've had, it, the project has grown, but one of the, one of the I, I had put it on the back burner for a while because I was, I felt that it, it, it really required a vocalist who understood the work. And if you don't have, and that's an intangible. You can't teach it, it just has to be understood. You have to understand where uh, Margaret Walker's poems are derived from, the period of time she writes from, all of those things. And if you have to explain it, it's like trying to explain a joke. It, you know, it's the, the same kind of thing. And um, then Rosina appeared. <laughs> so so we're, we will be performing it much more. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we, Well, well, actually, that's a great question because in these poems, I look for what pop writers call hooks. Um, inflation blues is what we got. And that is in the first stanza and it's in the last stanza, so it's a hook and it holds you. And I knew that those two stanzas would set pretty closely. Now, if you ask me, do I think about this a lot? Yes, I do, because I think in our culture, we are very pop-oriented. And for poetry to, to come alive with music, it has to speak in a way that we speak. It has to be kind of, it needs to be colloquial in a way. And um, I've been learning, Every time I approach a poem, I'm learning more and more about how 
Ms. Walker speaks, hearing the sound bites going onto the website where there are lots of, she, there's, uh, there are lots of, there's one, what's the name of that website that has all of her poetry where she speaks? Um, it's like po poetry. There's like some, con you can find it, just look up Margaret Walker, you, it'll, it'll come up. And I, I, spent, I spent a lot of time trying to get it into my ear. And then the music comes out. It's, that's the process. So, what would you, would you like to um, sing? Well, we, a request? Yes. Um, we, we have nine songs, so we can repeat one of them. <laughs> <laughs> to write the songs of my people. I want to hear them singing melodies in the dark. I want to catch the last floating strands from their sob-torn throats. I want to frame their dreams into words, their souls into to catch the sunshine laughter in a bowl, fling dark hands to a darker sky, and fill them full of stars, then crush and mix such lights till they become a mirrored pool of brilliance in the
thank you very much. I think we have some reception events or items outside. So please join us. And again, we hope to, we look forward to future class acts. Thank you.